It's like the Alex Jones argument. When people say, yeah, ban Alex Jones, like, and everyone's like, hey, 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 this is a fucking very slippery slope. Because yeah. if you want to ban everybody who's made disinformation and put it, put it out publicly, how's Rachel Maddow still on? Yeah. How is she still on? You, everybody's seen that video of her talking about the COVID vaccine. That's insanity. The government. I mean. Yeah. How are they still yeah. on? I mean, I mean, how many different stories were incorrect? Not apologizing for what he did, what Alex did. He doesn't apologize for it. I mean, he apologizes for it, but he feels deep remorse that he did that. He's just, like, overwhelmed by it. But that, getting rid of that guy is a slippery slope. And yeah. no matter what you think about what he said, you can't support that. you got to let people sort it out. The way to find out if, let's say, uh, he says there's a false flag and some attack somewhere, the way to find out if he's telling the truth is to have people investigate it. If you say that Operation Northwoods was uh, a document drawn up by the joint and signed by the Joint Chiefs of Staff that was going to uh, attack Guantanamo Bay and blame it on the Cubans to start a war, and you say that on your show, people will go, you're a fucking crazy person. How are you allowing these? No, no, no. You have to be able to have someone come on and say, hey, actually, this is true. And then you realize, like, oh, wait a minute. Some conspiracies are real. And if you silence this one guy that calls out all of them because he fucked up on one, you're also limiting his ability to call out the ones that are legitimate. And you're talking about a guy who's doing this all day long, every day. That's all he does. Yeah. All he does is and he's looking, out there. I mean, he's an out there personality. He's yeah. out there. <laughs> yeah. That's why he's fun. But he's yeah. out there talking about the World Economic Forum. I've said this a hundred times and I'll say it again. He told me about Jeffrey Epstein a, over a decade before anybody was it was in the news. He was telling me that there was this opera this operation and they take these guys and high profile public figures and a lot of politicians and they compromise them with young girls. It's like what? On an island. What yeah. is this a fucking ABC after school movie? <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. That sounds nuts. And then now everybody knows it's true. And there's been a ton of those from yeah. him infiltrating Bohemian Grove and catching these fucking wackos and heads of state burning an effigy in front of an owl god. Like, what the fuck? That's real? The, thing, the video he did with John Ronson in the 90s. So it's like all of this stuff at a certain point in time it, it needs to be out there. And people need to find out what's real and what's not real. What's real? And the, the only way to find out what's real is not to silence everybody who says something that's incorrect. It's to let people talk it out. So when someone gets on there and says, the Earth's hollow and there's fucking aliens inside shooting laser beams, let's, let's like talk to geologists yeah. and have them explain to you that they would be boiling in lava. Like, they don't live in the center of the Earth. We know what the Earth's made out of. We know all the planets. This is how we know. This is why we know the Earth is round, because every fucking body of mass, as it's spinning around, it, it, be, it, it takes on that fucking form. All the planets, every one of them. This one's not unique. There's also an element of this is part of American folklore. Yes. If you believe that the world is flat, it's obviously false. Um, any thinking person will conclude that this is a ridiculous, crazy thing to believe. And yet having a group of you know, flat earthers in our broader society, provided that they're not like given power over you know, the NASA or something, adds texture and rich richness to our culture, even if they're totally wrong. And so what we're having is we're trying to align a discourse rationally within these strict ideological bounds. It actually ends up breaking this great proliferation of culture, some of it which is good, some of it bad, some of it's crazy, some of it's insightful. But the, I think that the real calculation that we have to make is not even a free speech issue. It's not really even about censorship. It's about power and the distribution of power. If you stack up all of the people who have been kind of nuked from orbit online on the, on the right and then on the left, you have a graph that looks about like this. Yeah. And so you have to then say, well, why is that? Who's making the decisions? How are decisions being made? And who are they going after? What views are they trying to suppress? And so again, getting it out of the realm of the abstract debate and into the realm of, uh, uh, of a political analysis gets us to this uncomfortable point. This was happening during Trump. Trump yeah. was president and this was still happening. Yeah. And so we have to figure out why this is the case and go and disrupt it. And look, I, I, I think that you want to have more views, more opportunities, more subcultures, you know, more quirky people, more, you know, you know, people that are way out there. My, my old, you know, naked neighbor in Topanga, like, yeah. let the guy speak. Agreed. You know, Agreed. If he believes that, the, you know, that we have to have 
live water and yeah. and, and it's like nor it, the average person is not going to be persuaded and the view is not correct but the the broader culture suffers when everyone is fearing that if they step outside of the box that they're going to get crushed um and uh and 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 conservatives you know we get all worked up about it because look every political faction has their fringe we have fringe people in our coalition or on the outsides of our coalition but you have to figure out what's you know harmful and what's relatively harmless and a lot of these folk beliefs and superstitions um if you take them not to condemn people as stupid or ignorant or uneducated but you actually talk to people and try to get a sense of why do you believe this it's usually because they feel a sense of powerlessness and even the wef kind of uh uh, uh thinking they want to believe that there's someone out there that is calling the shots that is the the problem that is controlling the society because they feel that just by identifying a single point they have a sense of understanding a sense of power i actually don't think that that's the case i think it's 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 misleading i don't think it's the right way to to look at it but i try to also forgive people to say people are entitled to their superstitions we all have superstitions um and we want a society that where superstitions are eradicated but you actually end up getting rid of a lot of the texture and a lot of the variety of culture when you try to have a hygienic uh a uh, 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 treatment of culture you treat culture like a disease like a petri dish culture um and look i i think like go as far out as you want like go wild with it you know be respectful follow the rules you know maintain some core commitments but um you know i i'm always fascinated with those characters i lived in topanga i lived in berkeley like you meet these people all over you've lived yeah. in these kind of places yeah i have for the, I, for the I, 99 times out of 100 they're harmless uh, and they should just be tolerated and 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 respected well,